Westerham Brewery Viceroy India Pale Ale. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. This is going to be the second one tonight from the Westerham Brewery. Now I've just tried their Spirit of Kent Pale Ale, Triple X Pale Ale, which was absolutely amazing. It was a British Pale Ale, it contained nine British hops, it was super drinkable, it was just everything I love about British beer in a glass. Very, very good indeed. It got a 10 out of 10 from me. And this is the second one I've got from the Viceroy Brewery. And again, they're going big on their Kent heritage. If you look at the label on here, if I don't smash this fucking autofocus up before, you can see the host house in the background. And it's called Viceroy, which of course the Viceroy was the governor of India back in the times of empire and it's named after somebody called the Marquis or the Marquis I think it's pronounced of uh, Marquis Curzon of Kettleston he was from Derbyshire and apparently he was riding on his horse one day and said he would have loved a drink of beer and that's the inspiration behind this now Western Brewery are brilliant they only use Kent hops in fact I think that's a bit of a lie I think they said 96% of their hops come from Kent, which is a fair amount in anyone's book, if you ask me. And of course, Kent really is the hop-growing county. And now I know before anyone starts jumping up and down about that one, I know there are other counties in Britain that produce hops, but Kent has always been renowned for it. It has got a history and tradition of brewing, and it's got a history and tradition of growing some of the best hops in Britain, if not the best hops in Britain, so much so they export them to Europe and in some cases over to America as well. I'm not sure where, actually, I'm not sure whether that's true. I could be lying there. I don't think they export them over to America, but certainly over to Europe. A lot of Belgian brewers use Kent hops, which is, uh, you know, that's high praise coming from one of the greatest brewing countries in the world, Belgium. Um, this stuff, of course, isn't like your American pale ale. There, you haven't got the American hops in here. There's two British hops in here, which I'll go into in a minute. You haven't got the masses and masses of citrus that you have with the American hops. You have got what we Brits do best, India pale ale. Now, you can argue the toss that all these craft brewers are making IPAs that are and don't get me wrong, they are nice. I'm not knocking them. I just prefer the British stuff. Now, you may say, oh, it's because you're an old git and you're used to it. Not really. I am not a traditional camera, sandal-wearing, beardy bloke. I love my lagers. I do like my real ales, but I, do, I also like the American pale ales, the, the New Englands and the West Coasts. You know, it's not me being snobby or me being patriotic or anything like that. I just actually do prefer the taste of British IPAs to American IPAs. And as I say, don't get me wrong, I love New England IPAs. I think they're one of my favourite American styles of beer. The West Coast, not so much, a little too bitter for me, but some of them are good, don't get me wrong. I have given uh, some quite high marks to uh, West Coast IPAs in the past. The occasional one has come up and it's been really nice. But for me, this is where it started and I think what the Americans have done is they've put their own twist on it and fair play to them, I mean they've taken that and made it their, I wouldn't say they've made it their own, they've made that style their own, which everybody, well not everybody, but the craft brewers are copying over here, which I think is a shame. I don't think this, 
this should be missing out because this is, you know, this is where it all started. You wouldn't have your American stuff if it wasn't for this stuff. Anyway, rent over. Let's get on to the beer. Right, this is a 500ml bottle. It's 5%, so it's reasonably high in the ABV stakes. Um, I'm not going to read this out for the simple reason I can hardly effing well see it. Yeah, all the eyes are playing up again. The old mince pies. Pause that and read it if you want. Uh, what else have we got in here? This is vegan, bottle conditioned. Uh, the IBUs are 50, which is middling. As you would expect in an IPA, you do have to have some bitterness with all the hops that have been put in there. And please look at my video on the history of IPA. Hops were not put in there to survive the journey to India. That is a fucking myth. Stop perpetuating it. It is not true. Anyway, the two hops that are in here are Target and Progress hops, both traditional British hops. Target hops, quite citrusy. Well, when I say citrus, I mean orange. And you've got like a herbal type flavor to it. Some people call it sage. Some people call it like a grassy flavour. You know, you can argue the toss about what it is, but that's, you get the gist of it. And the progress hops, that's where your spice is coming from. But you also got a like dark fruit on that as well. And the dark fruit is like black currant, um, raisins, that type of thing, you know? So they're both, you know, two good British hops. And the malt in here is pale ale malt. So, it does have the makings of a good beer. I'm not getting as excited as I did with the Spirit of Kent stuff with the nine British hops in it. That really was exciting for me anyway. I know I'm a sad bastard, but that really did impress me. That got a 10 out of 10. It was so good, so drinkable, and it made a change from just being constantly bombarded with American pale ales. I just think, you know, we live in Britain. We invented the stuff. Come on. Right, let's get this open. There is the cap. Westerham. Westerham, of course, is in Kent on the A25, famous for Winston Churchill's house, which is, you can go past, I think, on the, on the A25. I've been there, not been there, but been past it a few times. Uh, I've got a mate who lives in Surrey, and my sister lives in Surrey as well, so, you know, the A25, when the M26 is knackered, is always an option. Let's get this in the glass. Right, I don't sniff beer out of the bottle anymore. There is no point, you are not drinking it out of the bottle. What are we getting? Mmm, that does smell nice. Quite grainy, malty. And the hops are quite... Oh yeah, wow. Spice. Quite pungent spice as well. What is that? It's like a, almost like a ginger. But there's orange in there as well. I'm getting some like orange, orangey type aromas. It's very, very subtle, as you would expect. Now, of course, if that was an American IPA, you'd just be bombarded with fruit at the moment, but this is subtle. I'm getting a little bit of them herbal notes as well, and it is grassy, but there, it is almost like ginger and if you can imagine this HP sauce a little bit, I know, I know, but that's probably the dark fruit, the spice mixture and the orange. But it smells nice. It smells interesting. Now, of course, there are some great British IPAs out there. Fuller's Bengal Lancer being one of my favourites and the Sam Smith's India Ale is another good one as well. So maybe this is going to be a good one as well. Now there's a very slight, I think it's a slight haze. Yeah, it's very, very slight. The pale ale that I tried was 
just cloudy really really cloudy and it reminded me of a car scale this stuff smells interesting let's get it down the hatch cheers Mm. bitter all the way through and that's coming from them hops there is that dark fruit and again it's like a it's almost like ginger it's like, I, I imagine it's just a mix of everything that's making that taste quite quite spicy There's some caramel malt in there. Definitely getting that. There's grassy and herbal notes coming through at the end as well. That's leaving a dry, bitter finish to it. Carbonation is quite, quite aggressive in there. Now that looks mildly carbonated, but once that gets in the mouth, there is a fair bit of carbonation. It's not too obtrusive. But you do know it's there and as i said that you know that tends to put me off a little bit if it's too much but this is just about right it's very lively though the head retention on that is quite good Very spicy, <clears throat> very spicy indeed, and bitter too, but nice. And again, this is what I would expect from a British IPA. Quite a bit of hop bitterness and spiciness as well, but a, a reasonable amount of caramel malt. And this is quite nice. It doesn't match up to the Shepherd Neem IPA, doesn't match up to the Sam Smith's India Ale, and it doesn't match up to the Fuller's Bengal Lancer. But it is not a bad effort all round. Mm. I think it could have done with a touch more malt it's very, I hate using this term, but it's very hop forward. British hop forward, which is giving it quite a bitter and dry finish on it. Whereas with the Shepherd Neem stuff, with, you know, the Sam Smith stuff, you do get a touch more caramel, which is more in keeping with the traditional flavours of a traditional British IPA. Now again, I urge you to look at, I'll put a link in the description for my history of IPAs. It originally, IPAs evolved from old ales, which were quite malt heavy. There was hops in there, but there was also a hell of a lot of malt. It's only recently that the fucking hops have just taken everything over. And I'm a little bit disappointed there's not a bit more caramel malt on top of that, because that would have been perfect, because you're getting all them British hop flavours in there. But you also, you know, you did have that malt finish on it, and you know, with, like you do with the, especially with the Shepherd name, you get a ton of caramel. The Bengal Lancer, you do get a a slight biscuit finish, biscuit stroke caramel finish, and of course the Sam Smiths is similar as well. But this isn't. This is all about the hops. It's good if you want to taste, you know, Target and Progress hops. You know, the the flavours do come through really well. But in a IPA, a British IPA or an English IPA context, whatever way you want to look at it, I just think there should have been a little bit more malt in there. But all in all, not bad, quite drinkable. Apart from that, no complaints whatsoever. And yeah, all round, fairly decent effort.
So what's the verdict on this? Yeah, uh, after the Spirit of Kent, I was going to leave this till tomorrow, but I couldn't wait because that was so good, that Pale Ale. I really enjoyed it. And I thought this was going to blow me away as well. I thought it was going to be another Shepherd name. But I'm slightly disappointed in that because, yeah, they've got the hop spot on. But I think they've just, they've just scrimped a little bit on the caramel malt, which for me, you know, if you balance that out, right like shepherd neem have done and like sam smiths have done i think you get the perfect british ipa but this is a little bit too hop forward as i said but having said that this is a good showcase for target and progress hops because you get all the flavors they are renowned for with these two hops you know there's plenty of like an orangey like an orange rind that's what i can the only way i can sort of describe it uh, and there's that herbal you know whether it's grass whether it's sage whether it's you know it could be any herb but you've got that like greenery herbal type of flavor to it and then of course you've got the progress hops with the spice there's a t absolute ton of spice in that as well and you are getting a little bit of the dark fruit but the dark fruit is quite subtle but all in all, not a bad effort. And I am all for British IPAs. I'm getting a little bit fed up now with IPAs. It's just everybody is doing them. But they're not doing British IPAs. And you can say they're boring and all that. You know, I don't give a shit. I like them. I do like British IPAs. Um, and I think when they're done right, they can hold their candle to any American IPA. You know, it, it, it says something that you know, we invented this stuff. And I think what the Americans have done, and again, I'm gonna reiterate this point, no disrespect to them, they have, they have taken that, grown their own hops, and put their own twist on it, and made it their own. Well, not their own, but they've mimicked what we've done to it. But I still think this is the more drinkable. I guarantee you, I could, most people could drink more British IPAs than they could American IPAs. Anyway, what am I going to give it? Um, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't slightly disappointed with it. I'm just looking at the head on that. Look at the fucking head. Maybe you can see that now. That is just super funny. After I tried the pale ale, I had really had high hopes for this, but I'm just slightly disappointed in the caramel malt, the lack of it. But having said that, it's not bad. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 and I think I'm being a little bit generous there. I'm not going to give it a 6 because 6 is what I usually give to crap beers. Or not crap beers but mediocre. This isn't mediocre, this is one step above. It just lacks the balance which is a real shame. I think if they just put a little bit more caramel, even the, you know they put caramel in the pale ale, that was lovely. You know you had the perfect balance of the, not well I say perfect balance, you had 9 hops in there. But it worked and it was very drinkable and it was super refreshing lovely mouthfeel it had everything going for it it was brilliant this is it, it just doesn't match up i don't think you know i think they've got the balance slightly off there with two hops they've got the balance perfect with nine hops in the other one and they got i think they got it a little bit off there but that's just my opinion and as i always say all these reviews are just my opinion you might try that you might love it so that's where i am with that one that's going to get a seven and a half, seven no i'm going to give it a seven out of ten yeah i'd recommend it to tr just to try the you know the target and progress hops get that taste of them british hops you know so if you're trying other beers you can recognize them and uh, yeah it's not bad got it on beers of europe quite reasonable as well i think it was just over two pound a bottle and it's quite hard to get hold of as well. It's um, only done in sort of reasonably small batches. So if you see it, get it. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>